that we're coming tonight, but welcome to Teachers Teaching Teachers. It is uh, May 3rd, and uh, I, there's a Jessica um, Early and a Jessica Hernandez Spear. So Jess, Jessica Early told me I could call her Jessie. Um, so I'm going to do introduce you that way. Um, let me just very, very briefly, before I introduce you, um, Dr. Early, um, to say that uh, what I what we'd love to do tonight is talk about next generation genres, in sp specifically about the first chapter in there, which is about turning point narratives. And um, what I have been messing with, and um, Jessica Hernandez Spears, students, and I a, a little bit have been starting, is we've been trying to figure out some AI tools to use alongside of the uh, description that Jesse Early has created here um, for us. And so we're going to try to go through a, a few of those tools just to kind of, so it's about the turning point narrative genre, but it's also about AI and how we can kind of mix them together. Fair enough. And there are a few of us enough here we can do um, better introductions than we might have if there were more, but that's fine. Um, Dr. Early, do you want to start? <laughs> sure. I, do you want me to introduce myself? Introduce yourself, please. Oh, yes, okay. sir. I'm Jesse Early, and I am the director of the Central Arizona Writing Project in Tempe, Arizona. And um, I've been in the writing project now for like 20, 25 years since I was a first year teacher in Portland, Oregon. I taught high school there and then went on to get my PhD. And um, now I teach teachers and do writing research. And this is my book, Next Generation Genres, um, about teaching writing um, and using digital literacies and teaching writing for civic and academic engagement. So, oh, look at that. <laughs> I didn't know that would happen either. <laughs> that was cool. Um, so anyway, I'm happy to be here. And I don't know a lot of... I know very basic things about AI, so this is really fun for me to see yeah, you guys. So spend, a, spend a moment, I was going to ask you to do that. Spend a moment representing how you feel about it, what you're thinking about these days and AI. And I think it's really cool. I'm super excited about it. I think it um, is, I don't know. I think it's really exciting to be in the middle of something happening, like real time. And every day I keep hearing, like I talked to a librarian today who's dealing with students um, in classes who, I guess he's dealing with instructors who have students who are using AI to write and they're citing references, but the references aren't real. Mm -hmm. So ChatGTP is creating references that they've asked Making for. It up. <laughs> right. The journals are real and the references aren't. So the librarian had to check them. It's really interesting. So um, that's not like what I'm as actually thinking that much about, like students' misuse of it. I think it's more like, or what the librarian thought was misuse. I think it's really creative and kind of expands the notion of what counts as writing and literacy and um I also think it pushes teachers to think about really wonderful ways of teaching writing instead of really formulaic ways that AI can kind of fill in and do for us. Um, so anyway, I'm cool. excited about it. And a little more about your book, maybe. And, it, and, and it's fine, if you don't mind, we can focus on the first chapter and know there are more we could get to, but. Yeah. yeah, so the book as a whole, just to give a framework, focuses on using genre as a lens for teaching writing, um, which is basically just thinking about audience, purpose, <coughs> um, the repeated patterns in a specific genre of writing that are expected from the audience or for the social purpose, and um, using model texts and digital tools to support the writing of these. So each chapter is a different genre. Um, and it's the goal of the book is to expand the writing curriculum. For a lot of us who are in the writing project, this isn't news really. Like a lot of us already teach really exciting genres and embed those into our classrooms. 
Um, but it is news for a lot of teachers who don't have the writing project or who are in the writing project and want to kind of use this framework as a new way of thinking. And um, one of the things that I've found through my research and working with teachers and training teachers is that often when we start in schools, um, as teachers, we're told to teach writing based on modes in thinking about narrative, expository, persuasive, poetic, creative. And actually that's not how writing works in the world. And writing is actually much more about social purpose and context, which is what genre helps with. So anyway, the turning point is a narrative genre that I came across actually when I was doing a different project, which was teaching um, about activism and social justice in my ninth grade classroom. And I ended up writing a book about that called Stirring Up Justice. And one of the things I did was read a ton of memoirs and autobiographies and biographies of activists. And one of the things these had in common was that people who are working toward change in the world often have a turning point that kind of inspired um, or instigated their interest in an issue that stuck. Um, and I kind of wanted to do something different than the literacy narrative, which has sort of permeated the college composition classroom and a lot of secondary classrooms, like telling the history of our lives as writers and um, sort of inviting students to think about a time in their life that really shaped who they are, what they care about. And that's what I'm calling the turning point. I, that's not my turn. You know, this is something that's been written about. Paul even said when we met, was it last week, that the Guardian has a whole. Yeah, Jessica, group. Jessica Hernandez Spear. Pointed found it changed, yeah. changed me. Yeah, it's like a, a, a section. It's not yeah, every day. The, it's maybe weekly. It's called a moment that changed me. See, that's awesome. Yeah. And I love that idea of teaching that. And for me, I like to start my year that way with students. So that's the first chapter. It talks about the turning point. So reading your book, I, I just want to say that I, I was impressed with how it, it's like it, it's a habit of you suggest that once you play with the, the idea of genres, you'll start noticing them and being bring those to the classroom. Mm -hmm. And Jessica Hernandez did that kind of immediately as soon as we started so working. Cool. With but yeah. Uh huh. Sorry, did somebody say something? No, I missed. OK, so um. But but I I also want to mention that there's something about your book that made me feel like, oh, she's kind of moving from this to that to that and like throwing pulling digital in. What if we what if we pulled AI in too? And you have been generous enough to let us play. And I, I really appreciate that. Um and David Cole is going to introduce himself uh as we <laughs> jump in here. It's okay, you just missed the introduction to the book. By the way, if you click on the book where David is sitting on it right now, um, yeah. you, will, you will go to the publisher's webpage and you can find out more about it there um, as well. Uh, go ahead, David, just quickly, who are you? What are yeah, you doing? Uh, Welcome. I listened to the NWP radio broadcast of Dr. Okay. Early's book, so I got that this morning. My name's David Cole. I'm a former, uh, my first career was teaching writing um, for about 12 years. And then I've worked in ed tech essentially and publishing. And I'm thrilled to be here. I've had the pleasure of working with NWP over about close to 20 years, largely around technology and student voice. So this, I'm excited to hear the conversation. I'm in a car and I'm gonna put myself on mute, on mute and get myself to my office, but I'll be back, okay? Okay, great, great. Thanks Good so much. You. Yeah. Jill, do you want to say a little more about what you've been up to? We've been up to, you've been up to. Yeah. Go ahead. Sure. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm Jill Stavronsky. I teach eighth grade language arts in William Annan. And Dr. Early, I don't see your last name there totally. Oh, uh, yeah, Early's Dr. Early, probably. it is. Actually, kind of, I'm, I'm in the National Writing Project, too, probably only five or six years. But I came there because... Uh, I absolutely believed that people write for real purposes and was motivated by the state scores and that we weren't writing for real reasons. 
And so a lot of what you, in your book, I can see there is exactly what I do. And so I've, I got in touch with Paul through Kristen Turner at the National Writing Project at Drew University. And we've been playing around with, my kids have been, we work up to TED Talks. So we do a lot of different things where we kind of write memoirs and then we write articles and we write, you know, different things about, we have book thought journals. And as we've worked up to the articles to build our TED Talks is when I ran into Paul and then we were playing around with AI to see how could AI help in the peer feedback kind of process in being constructive and giving reactions. And my kids, you know, I'm in the National Writing Project, so my kids are all in writing circles. So it was interesting for them to see versus the human, you know, what did they get? What did they value? And they were kind of testing out the templates that Paul had created. And then we would paste that underneath our articles that we were writing. And then I asked them to like give a reaction to that. Did they value it? Did they not value it? And that it's just been really fascinating. Like you, Dr. Early, I'm going to embrace it a hundred percent. I just think it's cool. And I said, it's exactly what education needs because it's the one thing that's going to start teachers to rethink Mm -hmm. what they're doing. You know, if, if AI can write it that easily, then why, why are you writing it? So Mm -hmm. I'm glad to be here. Thanks, Paul, for inviting me. Great, great. Christina, do you want to jump in with anything before we go further? Uh, sure. Okay. Uh, bring a little dread in. Um, yeah, <laughs> I, um, uh, I was telling Paul that like dread is 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 existential over, dread. You say existential dread is coming over me slightly, but I do really agree that. Um, so I work for the National Writing Project, sorry. Um, and I'm here in Philadelphia, a member of the Philadelphia Writing Project. And I do really agree that the provocation of these tools really, it sort of, you know, makes rote writing <laughs> very clearly a problem, right? And so we have to sort of, I do think it pushes a lot. I also am just concerned about, I think more just, last couple of days I've been thinking more about how to have conversations about the media literacy implications of this. Like what do we actually have to know and talk about <laughs> when we're <laughs> interfacing with these tools and, and just wanting to, so I signed up for a couple webinars that were really looking at the media literacy aspects of it. Cause I am worried that like in this sort of misinformation disinformation space these tools can really just cause absolute chaos so i'm kind of in both those spaces at the same time you know interested curious excited and also like oh god (laughs) what do we have to get in front of yesterday Mm -hmm. rather you know like there's a lot so great so (laughs) i so we have been playing here for the last uh, couple of months, even um, on now comment and w- trying to figure out ways to bring now comment AI into now comment. Um, and very specifically, and, and we've also been um, the work I've been doing with Jill's classes and uh, a, a group with uh, Bonnie B- Bentham in um, Philadelphia at SLA Bieber. Also um, we've been, using AI on youth voices. And this is actually the first time I'm a little nervous about saying this, but I wanna try to show seven different um, uses of AI using the first chapter of Next Generation Genres, all right? So (laughs) I hope you're game for that, to follow here and, and kind of figure that out with us. The first three are thinking partners on Now Comment, okay? So we're going to introduce that to you. Um, Come with me down um, to a room to the to the right. I guess it is. I can't tell which way it is. It's over here. (laughs) Yeah. I guess it's. Is it left? Yes. (laughs) Okay. Um, Let me see if I can get. Jessica to join us as well. Uh, not Jesse, just, oh, that's just David. Okay. You're here, you're here, right? Oh, she's coming back. Okay. 
So um, I, I just want to say, I'm going to sort of demonstrate it. You're going to tell me what to do. Um, but if you clicked on the blue banner there, you would go to the collection that's on Now Comment Now. Um, we have not released this yet. There are lots of interesting ethical questions that we want to make sure we're addressing before we do that. Um, but I'm going to show you by going to, there is a link here if you want to go another time, but I'm going to share screen and present and window and get to read my email for a minute, but um, let's see. Paul, I think David, oh, right, David's in a car. Yeah, he'll find us. Okay. He's still up there. I think, he, yeah, he was getting to his office. Okay. So first of all, we made a collection and um, Jessica Hernandez Spear, <laughs> sorry I have to keep saying the last name, but um, we, uh, you will not recognize, your students are not on here. Your students have been reading this and two other of the suggestions from Jesse's book. Um, but so this is the version that's on our staging site. Am I sharing properly? You are, yeah. David, you're here? Cool, cool. He looks like he's coming. I, I'm not gonna I don't see Jesse or Jessica either, strangely. Anyway. Well, let me look. No, everybody's here. Yeah, they're here. She, her she's camera's off, that's all. She's mm -hmm. right. Yeah, she has the fish. Yes. Yeah. And do you see Jesse right up above you? <laughs> Maybe make your screen smaller or bigger. We'll figure it out. Are you okay, Christina? You're muted. Oh. You're good. Okay. So I'm not going to explain every detail here, but I am going to explain a little bit that what we're thinking about is what if we could have um, Fred Middling sent me an email after he, uh, he, David Cole was trying to join us. I hope you are, David. <laughs> okay, so he sent me an email right after we introduced some of this to him and he said, I, li I love your reading buddies um, experiment. And so that's one way to think about these thinking partners. Um, if you could have a, 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 an AI reading buddy with you, what, would it, what could it do, okay? Going to, and then what we've done is we've taken um, Jesse Early's. Um, you have nine questions, I think, that you use to help us read more carefully these turning point um, narratives. Do you want to say anything about those questions or how you do that? The questions are just like guiding for close reading to help students read carefully and to think about the genre and to sort of read like a writer so that they can see what the writer's doing in across the turning points model text that they have. And when, when Jessica hernandez Spear and I started working with those questions, we started categorizing them and then AI needed us to detail isn't that important. But so we started thinking about, okay, could we have one of the thinking partners identify the language that's being used around the turning point, right? And just talk to us about the turning point in that paragraph. Now, and the language that's there. Now, one, then we said, okay, now to have another thinking partner think about the change that's happening and um, how that changes the writer. And then finally, what, what are the lessons learned um, through this? Right. So fair. Are those fair enough categories? You think? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to give an example of how this works. So I click on paragraph 53 here. Normally, with now comment, I would just make my comment. I'd make a, a small comment in the top and a longer one in the bottom. Um, but I can also click on here, ask AI, and I can choose one of these that I just mentioned, and we're going to call it a predictor. Um, and I'm not sure this is working the way I described it, but let's say it. Um, and then we're going to say, what's 
going on here? It's just some simple question. And I hit continue. And what this is doing, just very, uh, just uh, in case you're not aware, is it's taking the paragraph, it's taking my question, and it's also taking a prompt, okay? Mm -hmm. Um, which is our description of that predictor. And it's taking it to OpenAI. And OpenAI just took all of that and is sending back a result for us here. And I'll slow down once we get here, but just to, to take a quick look here. Um, can somebody read that for us? So it's not my voice totally. Christine, are you there? Could you read it? Is it big enough? The writer has definitely Thank set you. a tone for what the reader can expect in this text. They use short sentences like for a staccato-like effect to emphasize the few words being exchanged between the father and the protagonist. This could be foreshadowing that we are dealing with. And this could be foreshadowing that we are dealing with an estranged Oh, that we're dealing with an estranged relationship. Thank you between the two and that further conversation isn't going to be possible. The writer then continues on with more vivid details to continue to establish the tone of the piece. For example, the smell of his steaming hot black coffee and quote, the subtle tick of his turn signal whenever he changes lanes are very specific details used to emphasize the silence between father and son. It seems the writer is using the small details to set a solemn tone in the text. All right. And then there's a suggestion to get involved with this. Just want to just kind of just show and stuff right now. You can hit resubmit. Um, you could, I could have changed the question. And this comes up. And when the second version comes up, the student or the user could answer this question at the top, which is more helpful, honest and harmless between the two things that came back from AI. Um, hmm. I'm, I'm begging the question on the value of all this right now, just to kind of show stuff. <laughs> but if you'd like to say anything about how a student might react, you could. Yeah. So yeah, go ahead. Let me so let me just be quiet and hear what you're thinking as you see this happening. So I, I hit start conversation and over here is that AI analysis of that paragraph. Questions, thoughts, worries, issues? I, I think one way that it could really be helpful, like with AI, it you know, it's kind of like a tutor. So someone it is helping someone read like a writer, and then it's helping someone to see how they could create that in their writing. If this was going to be about like, okay, I'm reading this and thinking about when I create my own turning point narrative, um, it will help them recognize some of the details that they could be able to put in. And I definitely think it's the close reading that when the child doesn't you know, pick it up, this is the teacher picking mm -hmm. it up and noticing it. And just, just to say, there's a lot of thinking about what these thinking partners should do. Um, and so, and how they should, should they be teacherly or should they not be teacherly? That kind of thing um, is, is an interesting question still. Let me just, um, I, I only let one person speak though. Any other thoughts? <laughs> I just noticed the prompt for harm. I wrote it down, sorry. Mm -hmm. Honest, helpful, and harmless. Is that what you said? Yeah, those are those. Those are three words that researchers use um, to uh, train large language models to be more human-like. And so they give what what we just do did there. They give humans. Um, sometimes they don't pay them enough. And, and anyway, uh, but they give humans two versions of what AI comes back with, and they ask them to rate it in terms of its honesty, its harmfulness, and its helpfulness, right? Um, so I just think they might, those are three interesting things to have kids constantly be thinking about um, as they're working with AI. So yes, that's, 
Let, let me go just to show what another one can do. I'm going to pick another can I paragraph. Give another yeah. thought. Sure, here, yeah, jump in. I mean, you know, kids, when they're reading difficult, complex novels, can go to Spark Notes, can go to Lit Charts. The thing that this could do is it really does zero in on their reading. It doesn't, it could be, I still will be able to read the story because I have this partner where Spark Notes and Lit Charts are not going to go paragraph by paragraph by paragraph. So we could see this, because I always got to see the positive spin, that a child would then actually read the text because they knew they had a partner. And there's no way somebody that's 14, 15, 18 years old is going to be able to pick up on all the nuances. Not even an experienced reader does that all the time. So it could train their eye and make yeah. them a closer reader. I Great. I Real tension between wanting to show stuff and wanting the conversation to go. But thank you for keep interrupting me. I just want to show the second one. I I didn't know what to call it. I called it a change empath, um, where where so this tutor is looking for changes they see. Um, what's changing here? Hmm. Um, I hope you. I haven't introduced this, but there's a whole lot of other possibilities. And so as this is going, let me just say, the hope of this tool is that we could have three examples like we're having here. But then if a, a reader wants to say, I really want just three questions that help me with my comprehension, which um, you could create a thinking partner that does that for you or something more fun. Um, could <laughs> Jill, would you mind reading this one for us? Sure. Um, throughout the passage, there is a sense of the writer's understanding of the situation and their surroundings changing. In the beginning, the writer sees the place and people as a middle school playground, which is initially unfamiliar and intimidating. But as time passes, the writer starts to recognize the faces of the vendors, and they in turn recognize him, indicating a shift in his ability to feel comfortable in this foreign place. This change in attitude could be a result of the writer's increased knowledge and familiarity with his surroundings and the community that inhabit it. It could also be a shift in the writer's thinking and perspective, one in which his newfound identity allows him to feel a deeper connection with the people around him. The changes in the writer's attitude and understanding of where they are and who they are, um, integral to the story being told here. Let's take another look at this passage and see what else we can discover as the writer continues to grow and learn. Uh pretty heavy stuff, right? I don't know. <laughs> anyway, that, this is all an experiment, right? Just to say, but I'm going to pull that one and then just show you. So one of the tutors is predicting, is looking at the language and trying to predict where the um, turning point is happening. Another one is looking at the shift they're seeing in the, um, the writer, what's how the writer's changing. And then let's uh, just just to show the third one. Um, and looking for feedback on, hey, I wish there was one that could do this, right? Um, and not, again, didn't know what to call this, but we call it a sage. And we're saying, what wisdom? Something to that effect. Uh, as this is spinning, any thoughts, questions as, as you're seeing this? <laughs> I'll read this one. Um, I asked that and then I jumped in. I'm sorry, but you got to interrupt for a minute. Okay. <laughs> from, um, from this scene, we can understand that we have the strength to speak up in any situation and not be afraid of the outcome. Despite Mr. Unleaded's um, intimidating presence, the protagonist stood up to him and both of them laughed it off. It shows that by being brave and speaking out, we can build relationships even with people who seem intimidating. It teaches us to use our voices to create connection and understanding. Now, I want to jump in right away and then see what you think. So one of the weird things here is that it's looking for a turning point, a change, and a lesson in every paragraph no matter where the paragraph is, right? So 
Yeah, that's weird. Yeah, it is a little weird. But so we can, yeah, we can kind of see if that works or doesn't work. I mean, yeah, but other thoughts? <laughs> I was going to ask about the paragraph. Did you pick the same paragraph each time? Is that no, I picked a different, different one at time. Yeah. Okay. And so one of the one of the things you could think about is, uh, but I don't know. I mean, Superman. <laughs> the it, the first sentence is sort of the change, right? But so anyway, any. I, I just, let's just call that the sort of the limitation. Um, Jill, you, I appreciate that you like, put a nice. Can you have it here. pick right. the paragraph that is talking about the most change and just focus on that, or it only does? I think you said this, but like it only focuses. That would be nice, paragraph. right? Yeah. Um, and I first tried that, but it, it can't. It can't choose. It can't look at the whole story. Yeah. It's just too much That's context. That's the limitation. Yeah. But Jill tried to make that a positive thing, which I appreciate. <laughs> I do think it it's kind of interesting to look at each paragraph at a time. Mm -hmm. But I'm not sure we have the right thinking partners here. I mean, that's something AI is eventually going to be able to do, right? Is this just a limitation right now with how much it can read and take in? Yes. Yeah. And, and there are ways to think about that, that we haven't developed yet but i actually do think it's a relative so what i want to say so here's the thought experiment given given the nine questions given these this version of these three things that uh jessica hernandez spear and i have have messed with that we want to predict or we want to change empath and we want to sage right could we use those to help kids along with their reading of this text, could we say, "Hey, that thinking partner is not going to work at the beginning, but this, you know, try it on paragraph 88; it'll work there, right?" So that's one way to to mess with this at this point. That's Jessica Hernandez Spear. Why can't she get in? <laughs> All right, okay, don't know why. Can't help. All right, so. That's one of the things we're messing with. Um, can we jump to another example of how we're thinking about using AI? Or do you want to talk more about now comment here? We can jump. Okay. Okay, good. Let me just see what's going on with her. Okay. David, are you here? I'm here. Okay. Okay. Yep. Yeah, I'm but here. You want to you want to throw in any on the uh, paragraph question or? <laughs> you know, I'm gonna I'm about to shift over to the I'm okay. I'll to get wait from for the car to my desk, and I'm gonna get up on a desktop so I can see it. It's been very helpful to hear the hear the stuff prompted because I can't really read it, but I'll okay. be back in a second. So let's come on over to the right side a little bit. Just the room right to the right. And what what I really want to okay. Okay. Uh, and David's still over there, but that's okay. He'll he'll get here eventually. Okay. We are now in a WordPress site. We're on Youth Voices, right? Um, one you don't you don't say ten, but that's sort of uh a play you, you you suggest that what how kids could start um well why don't you say how, describe the list that you have people do jesse so yeah i'm i'm not i'm not sure i'm looking at the right thing you are oh so i'm looking at 10 memories yeah yeah so you suggest that people could a way to get into the writing is to is to make a list. Oh, of, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Thank Sorry. you. My brain's like, what? No. Um, yeah. So just to start the writing for the turning point is to think about just a quick list listing or brainstorm on the page 
of memories that stand out to you that felt like turning points that led to a change in the way you perceive of something in the world or something you care about deeply. Um, and so here's an example, it looks like of yours, Paul. Yeah, it, it is. So, so sorry, sorry to use my, but so the, um, so we have, we have been working again to, with kids and somehow saying to them, get to 10, like six, seven and eight are, are kind of more, more interesting than one, two and three sometimes. So that's, that's our reason for using 10, but you wouldn't have to. Um, but let me show you quickly the AI. So we come to a, an edit page in WordPress, right? We quickly give it a title. We make, we just make a list of 10 things, um, in our, in our life turning points. Um, this is after they've done the, the now comment stuff, right? They've cut, then we open AI Mojo here on the right side and we open a template. I'm showing this quickly. I know, but, um, and we ask it actually it, it's stuck here, but we can search for a genre hmm. and we, we find, we find the turning point narrative. Uh, is that the right one? Yes. Okay. So what we, what we created a template to do is we created a template to say, select just three of these, any three, and show me, get, do a, a think aloud walkthrough of how a writer might start writing about this, right? So this is how we're kind of giving kids ideas for how to get started on something. So let me show that. What we do is we click the bottom block down here we come over here and we choose this this one so our my 10 memories have jumped in here right i then hit generate and so what's going out is that prompt to say do with do a you know act like a writer who's starting one of these memories and show us what kinds of questions you're asking. What, what, I could show you that prompt, but um, that's probably enough of a description of it. Just want to show how this works. And for the students, is I don't know if Jessica Hernandez Spear got back in. If you did, speak up. No, okay. Um, for the students, we've worked this through. It has been kind of useful to them, I think. Uh, taking a while to generate. We'll see what happens. So it, it while that's happening, yeah, ask questions. Go ahead. It pops up ideas then for them based on the topics. It ticks, yeah. So yeah, and let's say it picks one that you don't want to write about. Yeah, that, that hasn't mattered a lot because they get the idea kind of thing. Oh. It's almost like having a peer, like like a writing group, person, like someone to discuss your writing with. Yes. That's the idea. Sorry, I needed to change the max length here. I don't know why that happened, but but other thoughts, questions as as this is spinning. Paul, is this is uh, you've done this a few times, and you it randomly selects three of your ten memories, mm -hmm. and then it presents some kind of its own AI thinking between the three to sort of suggest a connection as a kind of springboard for you? Like, hey, I, I, well, I guess we'll see what it says. Right? Yeah, um, I'm tr just trying to see if we can find mm -hmm. an example. Oh, okay. uh, no, I can't. Let's see if it pops up. Yeah, well, we can wait for a minute. Um, uh, we got one finally. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, so this is what it gives us. Uh, David, do you mind keeping reading there? Sure. Think aloud. I'm going to use the memory of moving to New York City as the focus of my turning point narrative. I'm going to start off by thinking about what kind of story I want to tell. Was this a positive or a negative experience? What emotion and thoughts come to mind when I think about it? How did it change my life? What lessons did I learn? How did it shape me into the person I am today? Okay, keep going if you don't mind. 
just to no, get sure. a sense of how it works. I'm going to start off by setting the scene and giving a re giving the reader a glimpse into what it was like what it was like for me moving to New York City. I'm going to talk about how overwhelming and exciting it was. It was all at the same time, how I felt so I so how I felt remember it's making all this up. Look, okay. <laughs> yeah. Also <laughs> that I was finally living my dream. I'm going to share some of the challenges I faced and some of the successes I had and how I overcame them. I'm going to end by reflecting on how the experience changed me and how it will influence my future. I'm going to talk about the lessons learned, the skills I acquired, and the growth I experienced. I'm going to try to bring all the, bring it all together and make a coherent, cohesive narrative. <laughs> so... And we won't read the other ones, but so it's want, kind of giving ahead, a suggested. Yeah. It's like giving a suggested outline. Right. Yeah, a narrative outline. Yeah. Um. So valuable. Is that like a outline? five? Is it a five paragraph? Yeah. I was gonna say, Jessica, this reads like, like a narrative, like a conversational version of the five paragraph scenario. I mean, it's got a context to it, but it's been interesting to hear the conversations about pushing back on the five paragraph. Um, essay, right? But this thing clearly is sort of framing a typical sort of... Which know, is what AI does, right? Yeah, that's exactly what it does, yeah. Mm -hmm. Perhaps, but I'm not sure I see that here, just to say. I, I'm, seeing, I'm, seeing, I'm, seeing, I'm seeing three paragraphs mm -hmm. and and yeah, I yeah. do think it's, it's focused on those same three kind of, like, where's the turning point? Mm. How did it change you? And, right? Yeah. yeah. That was well, the not even yeah. saying it has to be a paragraph. It's just three main ideas. Yeah. So those could be a page each. Right. I, I kind of you know, see it as like, you know, if the teacher's not right there, here's some questions you should be asking yourself to begin the drafting of something so that you find, okay, where's my opening? Where's my starting point? That's the way I, my initial reaction was. Yeah. And that's like the hope, right? Mm -hmm. But the worry would be just follow this paragraph by paragraph. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. what. I wonder if, uh, Paul, when you've done That's this before. Fair, yeah. Paul, when you've done this before. I'm generating again, just as, as you're talking. Yeah, when you've done this before, and if it's like the, the, the idea of moving to New York City is very much a familiar arc, right? There's, there's got to be genre stuff that's just pulling from the corpus yeah, and yeah. Getting, getting sort of cut and paste stuff. But for example, if it happens to pick when you met John Cage, that's not a typical scenario. And I'm mm -hmm. wondering if it well, would... We could, well, let's see what it said about that. Let me see. Yeah, if it gives us a... If the buckets it presents are as generic, I think what I'm doing is not pushing back on, but responding to the sort of traditional outline so thing, but I'm going is definitely so, like a so should we thing. read that one just quickly together sure oh, yeah I'm sorry if you don't mind <laughs> okay. you want me to read it sure if you, yeah I'm going to write a turning point narrative about meeting John Cage in 1977 and exploring his philosophy and music I'll need to start by setting the scene and describing who John Cage is and how we met I'll also need to describe how his philosophy and how and music impacted me and what kind of changes I made to my life or work as a result. I'll also need to explain how this experience has impacted me since then and been a turning point in my life. I'll need to think about the emotions I felt at the time and how I've been able to draw on this experience in different ways since then. Finally, I need to think about the lessons I learned from the experience and how I can apply them in my current life. Fair enough, okay. So, yeah, to what you were saying, I, Jill, it's I, very much like a set of prompts yeah. to get you get get one writing, right? Yeah. So just as a, one of the young women I worked with today, um, when she got her result back, said, "Oh, because she's she's never played with uh, AI yet." She said, "Oh, so instead of writing it for me, it's helping me write it, right?" And I'm like, right. "That's right. That's the hope, right?" right. Um, and it's but, kind but, of like but, having a writing conference. Like that's what mm -hmm. you would get if in a writing conference with someone like starting off. That's, oh, this is my that's idea. That's what I think. Because, mm -hmm. you know, what else could you put into it? Like then as they start to got, they develop a little bit more about it, right? They take the first initial, um, what, are, what are you calling it? Think aloud. And then mm -hmm. they could answer some of that, put that back in again, right? Mm -hmm. With another kind of thinking partner and help it. And I even think about like, I mean, I just think it really, 
there's some kids that are just they're they got it they're going to go off and they're going to write but right they some, may not are not. This, but, right. some are not and they need a little bit of help or they even need a little bit of help and like oh you're right did i never get to the one main point or i never did describe who he was i guess i should do that right so i i keep seeing it taking like it's i'm not spread so thin in the classroom yeah, me too yeah, I'm listen, looking at these things. I mean, even if the next, if I were, if I were a student working with this prompt, and the next, I clicked the next button, right, mm -hmm. and the page rendered where it broke, it had a, it, it formatted the title like it put the the prompt at the top, and then it pulled out some of the key questions it's asking, and there was a little form to fill in, and you start to iterate your way through it and draft your way through it, and then it responds. And the details you put in are providing more information, and you just sort of. Do, 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 do. It seems like, um, yeah. What I mean, I don't know if that's people not feel, what we're doing, right? Or, or no. Saying, yeah. Okay. I'm just curious about how do you how you not automate but sort of continue the momentum. Well, here's uh, here's what here's what we've done. I'll say. Um, so one of the one of the things that happened was it, it gave us first of all teaching the kids to go back to the template and hit it again, generate again. Like maybe mm -hmm. it'll hit the one you want to write about. Right? Mm -hmm. Don't just go with what AI has given you. But also the, there was one AI gave um, a young woman uh, good questions about um, a, a different trip. And she said, no, I want the trip to Germany. Right. And I, I said, yeah, but could you use those questions in that one? And she says, yeah, they're more or less the same. Right. So she kind of is, is starting to think about the form a little bit. But just kind of mechanically, we just have kids copy that. Um, and I'll use the John Cage one, come up here and paste that in here and then erase mm -hmm. the other ones, right? Mm -hmm. I see, sure. And then just just start your writing here, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Underneath that, just leaving that there for now to kind of remind you where, where you might want to go. I, I get, cool. Uh, if, if there's anything else that, <laughs> I'm learning about this. It's about AI isn't a thing out there. It's that when teachers start molding it and figuring out how to use it, it's going to be much more interesting, I think. So yeah. that's worth saying. But this is one, this is one of the traveling to Mexico one. I want to I'm looking at the clock and thinking I want to show one more here. Um, so yes. So this is a, a more developed essay, by the way. Um, we have them, instead of making a map like you suggest, um, Dr. Early, um, we have them make a Dali image of herself in Mexico, right? And then right, and then keep the uh, prompt that they make. So there's all that kind of play. But then this is her more developed essay. And this time, this is genre 03. This asks, AI to find three points in the essay that are a good start, but could somebody read these maybe? And then we'll get a sense. What's up <laughs> Should I do it? I'll do it. What do you want? The point one over there yes, on the right? Point one. Yes, thank you, Jill. Point one. It took around three months to recover a bit, but this led to me getting extremely sick and being bedridden for a month. I felt like it was my last days. This is a good start as it conveys the gravity of the situation and the emotional impact it had on the narrator. However, it could be expanded upon by improving more detail about how the narrator felt, the physical and emotional toll the sickness had on them, and how the experience changed their outlook on life. And there's a second quote, sort of a similar, right? This is a great start. Yep. But here's what else you could do. And then the last paragraph here. If you you have mind. a good start on this narrative essay. You've used vivid language to describe the events you experienced, and you have started to explore how this turning point has shaped your life and your outlook on your future. To make this essay even more compelling, you could explore further detail about the events you experienced, provide more insight into how they changed you, and reflect on how this turning point is connected to your future goals and aspirations. So again, sort of up in the ante a little bit, trying to get her to think about what she could do. Again, grand experiment. <laughs> is this going to help the writer? Um, you know, yeah. But some thoughts about this. 
and this is very real. We, you know, we did this today. <laughs> Again. But. I'm going to tell you, just even with my kids, with the articles, they did say, for the most part, they felt like the feedback was oftentimes better than what they were getting from their uh, teammates. But of course, we were fiddling around with a lot of them, but they were loving the feedback. It wasn't it was this really exact quality one, but I could see them liking it. It yeah. is. Um, and it's yeah, nice. So let, let me it's stop like sharing. Yeah. A nice tone. Let's talk. Yeah, and getting the templates to give that tone back is is a, a large part of the work here, right? Is how do you how do you teach? It's not Chat GPT that's coming back, right? It, it's the same model that's coming from Chat GPT, but we're adjusting it. We're making we're we're telling it how to talk. Right. It's not replacing their writing. It's really helping them expand their writing. Yeah. Bonnie, you got here. I didn't see you. Hi. Unmute. Say hi. <laughs> if you can't. There you go. Yeah. Hey, everybody. How are you? No, I, jump, I just jumped in. I don't need to talk. I can listen. <laughs> Your kids talk for you, let me tell you. So on the front page of, of Youth Voices is this mess, a wonderful, beautiful mess. I love it, of, of Bonnie's students saying what they think about AI. These are seniors who are going to be done in three weeks, right? So just to say. <laughs> um, and then, but I, lo I love reading, I was just reading tonight, their comments back and forth to each other. Pretty interesting stuff that going on there. Do you want to say any more about that or? Well, you know what? I, I have to say, um, I think Jill is the one that just said it um, It takes a lot of weight off of you using AI. Um, and because of Youth Voices, uh, the students, the students told me, though, Paul, that they use it all the time now. And they prefer to use the AI going into the Youth Voices, um, the mojo. They call it the AI. I, I'm going to the AI mojo <laughs> all the time now. Um, and it just helps them so much. And they're looking at their their own writing, their own thoughts, um, and their own. Uh, you just said, said something else, Jill, or I, I'm not sure if it was Jessica, like their own mental dabblings um, expressed in complete thoughts. Uh, and and they're they're really liking that, and and they need that before they go out into the world, and everybody calls them an adult. <laughs> one, one, one of the things we experimented with, if you don't mind me saying, and, and thank you for letting us experiment, um, is that they we had them copy all of their comments on the reading long division um, on now from, comment from now comment. They go ahead, you it into it. the AI mojo. Now now, now I'll take it off because. And um, so they wrote, uh, well, yeah, you go back. You can bounce off of me, Paul. Paul and I have been doing a lot with these children in a, a short amount of time. Really, we just keep trying. Anytime he comes out with something new, I'm like, okay, come on, let's do it. <laughs> I need teachers like you. Jill does that too. Oh, cool. Yeah, so we should, yeah, go ahead. Somebody so, was uh, yeah, so we took their comments and we took them from one platform into AI Mojo and had them look at wh what they liked the best. And for uh, Youth Voices, they talked about which choices they had, just like what you were just talking about. But that's a different setup. But, but so we had the, we had we asked the template to read all of the comments and mm -hmm. come up with three themes that it sees there. Mm -hmm. And then quote from the quote from the um, the students' work to support those three themes. Um, anyway, not a totally successful experiment because I think some of some of them were a mess. The people who had the best comments got the best AI response. People who had shorter, not so interesting comments got less good AI response. So just to say, that was a, a learning in itself. I think. Oh wow! Yes, yes. but that's really students, interesting. Yeah, and the students really love it. So I because bet. of Paul, 
I made them comment on each other and they couldn't comment on uh, students in their own classes. So they had to comment on three. And, and that gets them reading too, what other people were thinking that you all are all sitting in the same classroom, but your thoughts about one lesson or idea vary. And you're all in the same classroom and you're all hearing the same message. And I think that that puts even a different lens or perspective on of, of a respect for the teacher. Because we are we used to be the only ones to take all that in and yeah. see it. But these young people have they now see like, oh, you sit right next to me, but you don't even think like I'm thinking. And, we're well, and it also gives the writer such a a much larger audience, right? All these students yeah. outside of their classes are reading their work. So yeah. that's really wonderful. Yes, yeah. So, so I, it has really been it has really been uh, a good experience. And I can't wait to work with it again next year because you know, the first time I'm I'm in elementary school. The second time, you know, I get to take off a little, little, the runway is a little smoother. <laughs> so let me just, I, I, I want to kind of wrap it in some way. Um, and, and thank you, uh, Dr. Early, for coming and sharing your work with us. We're going to keep messing with it and we'll let it's you know so what it I looks love like. Seeing it. <laughs> okay. Um, but, you know, I, somebody asked me recently to write a 500 word thing for college English about how AI is in English classrooms. And I'm a little, anyway, what I think I want to say in that is, you know, all the debates about AI and the feelings we have about it, you know, keep, keep research, keep that going in your own head. But when I watch teachers use it with students, it makes sense, right? And it starts to, it starts to be, you know, crayons in a box that people were painting with, or I don't know how to say it, right? But you know, um, Paul, so I think I'm excited when teachers are using it. Yep. I think that's a good way to say. It. And I think the thing is, the teachers I know that are fearful about it are not. One of the kids in my kids are trying to write this article about it. They said because we were allowed to play with it. We actually wanted to use it like as crayons and take our own voices and see how we could expand our articles and our voices. When you're fearful of it and you present that to your students, like, I hope you don't do that. And I hope you don't cheat and have chat GPT. It sends a message that it could do it for you. If you send it the message, it's a tool and wow, what could it do for you? That's the message they take and they play with it. And the average human being is going to be honest about that. I think that's, it's how we deliver it as a teacher. Mm -hmm. It sounds like, Bonnie, you had a good experience with it too. Yeah, and also, so Jill, what I also tell you, you know, the majority, I teach the world. So the majority of my students are students of color. And usually what happens with new innovation for people of color, we're the last ones to get it. Totally. My children are out there first right now. When we don't get it first, we're given all these different reasons why we should not use it. And so first and foremost, they've been told that it is a cheating mechanism. Yeah. And so I've told them that no, it is not. And it's your partner. It's your collaborative partner. And Paul uses the term thinking partner. It is a collaborative partner for you because it's your thoughts that it's taking and make it, it sound better to the reader. So you nobody's cheating here because this <laughs> is you. No one is cheating. But then I also tell them while the private schools and elitist schools will use this because their students can pay for it, you're being told it's cheap. It's a cheat and don't use it. Something is wrong with that mixed messaging too. Bonnie, you should write this. <laughs> write that. It's so, so good and so true. So while they're doing, I said, so you're walking out of my classroom in front of all of this. 
I really yeah. agree. I really agree, Bonnie, that it'd be important to write up, write this up. And, and like I would say, I saying that the media literacy implications of this are really important for us to like, talk, like get in front of. <laughs> and the I think, politics. yeah, and the politics of it all, I think it's really important. Because once, I mean, once, Paul, when you're showing us this and then Bonnie and Jill, like, seeing what you can do with it in your classroom. I wish I could come to your classrooms, but please come. Really, you could. Um, well, we're almost done now. I, I know mean, next year, next year. Okay. But it's like, it makes me feel like my brain is expanding. Like it's an expanding, expansive tool. And every time literacy expands and innovates throughout history, there's always this voice of it's bad. It's bad. And then the elite take it and use it for their advantage and do exactly what you're saying, Moni. So I think it's so powerful to see this. And Paul, like, I love the way you've set it up. Yeah. I mean, and the way you're demystifying that there's a lot of work that goes into doing that well hmm. so that it comes back in a thoughtful That's kind. another really important point, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Good. I think that's what my kids even discovered. They had to keep putting in things so specific. They wanted to right. test it. Could it write a eulogy? Could it do this? Okay, one girl, her mother just died. She had to put in so many details right. that in the end, you know, she was like, okay, I couldn't cheat and write it for me because in the <laughs> end, I'm the one who experienced it. Yeah. So, Which is the same with the turning point, right? Like you, right. you can only write your turning point. Right. And I think, you know, Dr. Earl, you said it in the beginning. It's going to challenge the teachers if you're asking all the kids to write the same essay off of the PowerPoint or off of the one book. Well, what was the purpose? That's not what we do writing. That That's not a purposeful writing assignment. Who's the mm -hmm. audience? You, the teacher, for the grade to see if they know what you think you want them to know about it. Mm -hmm. And I think it's going to be the great death of those Thank goodness. <laughs> yes. And, and you know what else, Jill? Just to piggyback what you were saying and to tell you all, you know, young people are made to feel like they aren't the smartest persons in the room. And not just that, you know, and, and these phones. Yeah, I said, if we're calling a phone smart, then what does that, what are we calling ourselves then? <laughs> You, you always are attached to a doggone smartphone. What is that saying about you? And I have them thinking, I said, so AI is being pushed out like it's, oh, it's highly intellectual, but it can't do anything without you. So who's really the <laughs> smart person? Who is the smartest person in the room? So, and so I'm selling it to them like that as well, that it cannot do anything without your intelligence. Mm -hmm. It cannot do anything. And, you know, in, in, in the communities of color, you know, they're never told that they're highly intellectual. Mm -hmm. Never. So mm -hmm. doing this work, I'm able to say these little things to them all the time. And I had to come up with new terminology in order to sell them on it. Now, some of those children can't stay off of it. I mean, they're going to use voices like that on their dog on phones. It's brilliant. Okay, that's awesome. Yeah. Bonnie, well, that's I, find, I find the same oh. thing because my kids are giving their logins to friends oh. so they can get on because, you know, they're coming to me. How can I get on that too? <laughs> Paul, you're yeah, the new Mark Zuckerberg. Yeah, right. And they're, oh. yeah, right. And they're using they're using it in other classes too, which is like oh yes, you know, my kids immediately is, started using it for all their other classes, and we talked about that. Like Bonnie, you know, this sounds like we have a similar soul. I just said to them, if you can all, if you're all writing the same social studies essay and you have the same three points in the same five paragraph, then, and you can all, an AI can write that for you, yeah. then is that a worthwhile assignment? Let's really think about yeah. that. You're going to be real popular with the other teachers. I don't know. I know. <laughs> That's okay. It's Listen, exciting. thank you, thank you um, for your time here. Um, we will continue this, obviously, and uh, get back to you. Um, but thank you so much for organizing. You.
Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Paul. Wednesday. Sorry, I missed okay. your part, but I, I'm glad that you're still here, Jessica Early. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. This was awesome. Good night, everyone. Thanks again, Paul. Good night, Thanks. everybody. Sure. Sure. Jessica, Goodbye. I just bought your book. Oh, that's awesome. Because <laughs> we're going to try to do interviews for the end of the year, and I think you did something on that. Yes. Well, maybe profile would work with that. I don't know. Yeah, the profile. Yeah, yeah, so yeah I want to do something that, that to keep them engaged. And that's the next chapter that Jessica Van de Speer wants us to work on, too, by the way. She's oh. like, okay, they did the turning point, or they're doing the turning point. And then I want them to look at, uh, you know, another person. So... Right. That's cool. That's now, which, school yeah. which school are you uh, from? Second oh, school? I'm at I'm at William Mann and Bonnie. I'd love to connect our kids. Okay, and what grade are your children? I teach eighth grade. You're all doing many projects with seniors. They're, oh, they're, yeah. they're they're all on Youth Voices. You could find each other there. Yeah, yeah. that's what I was asking. Yeah. Oh, right. It would be great because we could read each other stuff, and then maybe here and there we could do a live Zoom so they could see each other. Well, these children are about to graduate. They're yeah. in the last next year. three days. Next year. Yeah. All right. I'm gonna I'm gonna stop you from thinking. Goodbye. Okay. Bye. <laughs> Bye.